Hello everybody, my name is Stephanie, and I will be reading uh, Nick's claim that um, letter grading, what, what is it good for? Uh, first of all, let me point out that um, it's three supreme claims. The first one is letter grading reduces students' interest in learning uh, the material. Number two, letter grading reduces quality of students' thinking and willingness to try something new and challenging. And number three, the last one, letter grading causes developmental issues at younger ages. Now to the first claim, the opponent claims that uh, letter grading reduces students' interest in learning new material because students seek an easy way to earn an A. Uh, in response to that, you need to consider that an A in one class may not be an A in, an a in another class um, because a teacher's grading system can be rigorous in comparison to another one. For example, um, we all know that in high school you're prepared for college and stuff like that. But I graduated high school like three years ago. And it's nothing like college, it's completely different. I honestly did so well in high school and college, I'm like, oh, it's really, uh. Um, his second um, support for his first claim is that you view learning as a chore, so you try to complete the assignment as easiest and most efficient way. Um, and he even said it's like a chore. So like they say, you know, a lazy person doesn't work twice as much as, a, as much because you're not motivated to do it, so you just do it really fast. And I mean, no one's gonna pay you to do a chore that you, you know you didn't do a job on. Um, so that is why letter grades are needed, so that a student can work hard in order to have a favorable evaluation. And that is why uh, grades encourage students of pretty much any age to learn because it gives them an incentive. Teachers grade students on how well they do. For an anecdote, <coughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a point to be one year, and they were talking about one of the quizzes by a professor, and one of them said, oh, I got a 10 out of 10. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You I mean, you're not going to be flaunting that you did bad on a quiz. So in a way, grading like does motivate you to do better, and maybe like you'll do better on more claims. Um, his second claim is that letter grading reduces quality of students' thinking and willing to try something new and challenging, which causes students to lose interest in learning, lose creativity, and students refer refuse to work hard on challenging projects. I have two quotes. From, mentoring to, uh, from Teaching to Mentoring by Lee Herman and Alan Mandel. The first one is a mentor is more effective in teaching when he manages or she to incorporate students' interests in the lectures. It is important to keep in mind that students do get tired of a routine, so we need to get creative and uh, change things up a bit. The second uh, quote is that curiosity and learning thrive when connected to and emerges from contexts which are familiar and meaningful to the learner. Whatever context we are feeding the students, you need to um, break it down and make it easier for them to understand. If you keep going and going and you never stop to see if a student gets it, they will obviously stop losing interest. Uh, my response to, oh, and his uh, last claim is that letter grading causes developmental issues at younger ages because uh, children develop at different ages and speeds and you are forced to learn the curriculum that may be inappropriate for your abilities. And uh, students are, uh, become stressed because they have to compete for a grade. My response to that is, according to the National Dis Dissemination for Center for Children, they offer a method of ability grouping, um, which, uh, which means uh, you are grouped based on grade assignments um, that are to help you increase student achievement. Ability grouping with grading is a method where you, uh, you're placed in two groups, uh, between class and within class. <coughs> in a between class grouping, um, every first when you form a class, so the students have, of the same ability are placed together. And the second method is within class, which means that uh, a teacher group of students of familiar ability within the same uh, within the same group in the same class, but depending on your abilities. Um, it is difficult um, because there are so many different levels. And um, for example, like I work in an elementary school where you can see if a student is does not belong there or some that are um, having problems catching up. Uh, and they say that that um, uh, students become stressed when they have to compete for a grade. And according to an article on Worksheet Library, um, um, they give you tips on how to reduce stress so that uh, students can offer, uh, so they can't uh, see what, too bad at school. Um, the first one is to add laughter because it unplugs stress and gives students uh, a sense of, of toughness and work uh, to work more efficiently. Um, number two, a teacher can build self-esteem so that a student, uh, because there are students who have low self-esteem and that causes them to opt from trying to learn on their offer goes on. What a teacher can do is, in grading, um, put in easier questions in, in, uh, in between difficult ones so that they can reassure students about their answers and at the same time uh, challenge them. In conclusion, according to the University of Washington Faculty Research of Grading, they say that it's important to have a great letter system because 
Number one, it shows students uh, where they compare to each other academically. Number two, grades are used for screening systems such as awards and scholarships, um, also sentences to school. And, um, and the last one is because they are meant to discipline the student so that they can succeed in a school environment. Well, I think that last quote is pretty effective. It's setting up what your counterclaims ought to be, and it seems strange that you use it as the kind of the summary of the argument when a lot of those things weren't things that you did much talking about. Uh, you did a little bit on um, you know comparison, but not much on you know, people becoming disciplined enough to follow, which seems to me like it would have been a good counterclaim to the argument that students are trying to avoid uh, challenges or that they uh, view the work as merely being a choice. Well, the truth of the matter is the argument should be that they need those chores. That's the way they get disciplined to doing something. You get used to having to live your life. You know, I, I hate to break it to you, but if you think your classes are boring, wait till you get to your jobs, you know, because <laughs> down the road, a lot of people, you're going to be doing sometimes the same thing over and over again. Uh, you may be dealing with projects that are boring. And, it's great to have interesting people come into your lives, but you don't always get to choose who your customers are, and sometimes they're horrible, and you just have to manage to get through with that, and you need discipline to do that. And I think that's a good counterclaim to make on that argument, but it feels like it's kind of buried there at the end instead of integrated into your argument earlier. I think you've got a couple of responses on those points that show that, and I like the fact that you take a couple of personal examples out to talk about those issues, too, and help relate it to uh, the audience. I think that adds a nice uh, personal dynamic to it. And it, and it makes it a little bit more convincing there. Um, you follow the structure pretty well. I'm not sure that you always analyze the advocate's evidence very much. Uh, there's not really a discussion of whether or not their evidence is credible, whether or not we ought to be reaching the conclusions based on the information that they presented. You just kind of present these counterclaims. And I think the counterclaims are okay, but again, in contrasting the two points, we need to have some standard by which we can compare those points. And uh, that's why I think it would be a little bit stronger if you had uh, started with those initial counterclaims and said, now, how can I prove those particular kinds of things? All right. Thank you.